Hello? <laughs> um, hi everyone, this is Emma Jones. She is the founder of a small business um, called Enterprise Nation. She is also the co-founder of Startup Britain and she received an MBE also for her... Um, what for her what? No, you can finish that <laughs> sentence. You started it. <laughs> what did she get one for? For... Services to Enterprise. Services to Enterprise. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, give a warm welcome to Emma Jones, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Or as warm as it gets at nine o'clock at night. So, uh, first of all, I cannot believe there are people here to talk business and even hear about business at nine o'clock at night. And the second thing is, I think this is going to be the closest I ever get to feeling like Madonna at the O2 with this strapped around my head whilst in the O2. Uh, but a pleasure to see you here this evening. Uh, this is the latest I have ever presented at an event. So for those of you who are here, I guess you're very keen on hearing about pop-up shops and things that... Uh, we're doing because it's about pop-up Britain that I'm going to talk to you about for about 15-20 minutes and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions as well. Uh, so as mentioned, um, Pop-Up Britain is part of something called Startup Britain, uh, which uh, hands up if you have heard of Startup Britain. I also don't know how many British people I have here in the audience. So good, one per two people have heard of it. So Startup Britain is something, actually is Madonna playing around the corner at the moment? <laughs> That's holding music. Startup Britain was launched in March 2011. Uh, we are a national enterprise campaign. It was founded by eight people who run their own businesses. So my business is Enterprise Nation and seven other people who do the same thing. And we were launched by the Prime Minister, but we don't have any government funding. We've never taken any government funding. We're a private sector funded campaign. And our aim is to encourage more people to start a business and help existing businesses to grow. So the way in which we do that, which we have been doing for about two and a half years, is we hold startup events such as startup fashion, startup food. We take big tours, buses around the United Kingdom, encouraging lots of young people to get started. And the other thing we do is we open up pop-up shops and help small businesses grow, which is what I wanted to chat to you about. So Pop-Up Britain is something that we launched 12 months ago, July 2012. And essentially, this came out of the fact that um, what we have seen in Britain recently is lots and lots of emptying shops on the high street. So currently, vacancy rates are at about 15% on British high streets. And for those of you who've seen the news over the past couple of days, that kind of percentage is getting higher, the situation is getting worse, and there's just been a big evidence inquiry around what on earth can this country do to help the high streets. So we as Startup Britain kind of saw this situation of lots of lots of empty shops, and yet, on the other hand, we've got loads of small businesses, online, home-based businesses saying, but I would love a high street experience. So we thought, right, surely we should leverage our position as a national campaign to do something about this. It also helps that the chairman of Startup Britain, um, who wasn't with us when we launched, but has been fantastic over the past 12 months, is a guy called Luke Johnson who's a very successful entrepreneur in the UK. He runs brands such as Patisserie Valerie, Strada, Giraffe, but he's just sold that to Tesco's, uh, Gale's Bakery. So he owns lots of property on the high street. He understands casual dining. He understands retail. So we went to him and said, right, let's do this thing. Let's launch something, which actually when we launched, it was called Startup High Street. And what it was about was helping great British brands get onto the high street. And there's just two angles to it. Um, oh, actually, no, just before I go back onto that, uh, one aspect of it is called pitch up. And this is where we connect small businesses with head buyers from large retailers. So we've done it with John Lewis, which we've done for about just over a year now. So we connect the small businesses, they go and meet the head buyers from John Lewis, pitch their products. And in fact, I was with John Lewis earlier today and about 60% of the businesses that have pitched their wares to John Lewis are now stocked in John Lewis stores. So it's an incredible thing for any small business who may have been manufacturing or producing in quite small quantities and then suddenly you get a deal with John Lewis and you get stocked in all their stores. Uh, this Friday, um, we've just announced, well, we announced a couple of months ago that we're also doing pitch up with Sainsbury's. So for food-based businesses, we're taking 10 businesses in on Friday to Sainsbury's. And again, they will pitch to the head buyers, hopefully, to win a contract to get into Sainsbury's. So pitch up is one way in which we help the brands get onto the high street. But Pop Up Britain is probably the most impactful project that we've launched. So I just wanted to show you a few pictures that kind of show you the history of Pop-Up Britain and hopefully kind of what we've achieved in 12 months. 
This was our first shop that we did open in July of last year. Um, it's in Richmond. For those of you that know Richmond, it's opposite Richmond Station. You come out of Richmond Station and we're on, the, well, we were on the opposite side of the road, number 2Q Road. It was an old estate agents company which had been empty for four years. So we um, essentially managed to get support from the local MPs at Goldsmith. We got great support from the local authority and we said, can you help us find or get into this empty shop so we can fill it with small businesses? So this was the shop. Um, at the time we opened, we did everything. That is, well, that's two of the girls, in fact, that's the opening of the shop. Two of the girls literally painting the brands, uh, not knowing that we then had to paint over this on bright red, uh, pulling up the carpets, rejoicing when we'd got some part way through to having a shop. Um, and this is what we turned it into. And just to explain a little bit about the model of Pop Up Britain, is what we do is we crowdfund the rent. And I don't mean we go onto a crowdfunding website. We fill a space like this with multiple numbers of small businesses. So in this shop, we had six small businesses all trading at the same time. And the benefit of that is essentially it makes it affordable. When we first opened in Richmond for two weeks of trading, which is what we tend to offer in terms of time and duration. But as we go through the story, I'll show you how that's changed a little bit. When we moved into Richmond, we had six businesses. They each traded together for two weeks. And for that two weeks, they paid £150 to trade in that shop. So it makes it incredibly affordable for every small business that's going in there. Um, we've got rents that are a little bit expensive now, but I'll show you why in terms of the location. So this was Richmond. Um, it opened. Our branding was very basic, which you can see here. We then opened a Christmas marketplace. This was at Somerset House. Again, crowd resourcing the model. Then this shop was in Victoria, which um, was quite a strange one for us because this was opened in the bottom of a government building. Um, and this is because by the time of October, well, we opened this in December, but in October we were called in by the minister, um, Mark Prisk, who's responsible for communities and local government. Well, he's responsible for the high streets. And he said, I think pop-ups can play a role in regenerating the high streets. Will you come and open a showcase shop in my department building? So we opened in Victoria. This guy here, Phil Morrow, has been a fantastic tenant of ours. Um, I call him a pop-up tart, actually, because he's popped up with us in virtually all of our shops now. Uh, but for him, it works very well. He runs a great business called Morrow's Outfitters, and he sells incredible socks. Um, and the criteria that we use when we choose pop-up Britain tenants is essentially any business that's an online business, i.e. Cur doesn't currently have a shop, and essentially that their product suits the local market. And they are our selection criteria in terms of when we look for certain tenants that come in. Um, this was our first outside of London shop that we opened in a place called Morton in Marsh. Um, and the reason why I wanted to show this picture is the gentleman that's cutting the ribbon. Does anyone recognize this man? And I don't even know if I'll be able to hear you shout it, even if you can. Uh, hand up if anyone recognizes this man. Okay, so this man is called George Davis. He launched Georgia Asda. He was the head of Next, so i.e. a fantastic retailer who happens to live in Morton in Marsh. Uh, so we contacted him and said, will you come and open the shop? And this has been one of the other aspects of Pop-Up Britain is we have tried to recruit very top-end retailers or just kind of really experienced retailers to back what it is that we're doing. So as I say, Luke Johnson as our chairman has backed us, Sir Charles Dunstan backed us when we kind of first launched and having people like George Davis has been fantastic to get their support on board because our current tenants look to them as kind of fantastic retail entrepreneurs. So to have them involved is a very good thing for us. So he opened in Morton in Marsh. This was a great shop. We had... Um, four tenants in this shop. One of them was a dating, an online dating agency. And this was the first company we had that didn't sell products. Because as you can imagine, most of the tenants that we take sell products because that's what sells well in a shop. And we did a, lo a lovely interview. Um, BBC On The Money is a show that goes out on a Sunday night. And they went to do an outside broadcast with the tenants. And the lady who runs the online dating agency said, oh my God, this has been the most incredible experience and I've managed to match virtually half of Morton and Marsh, of people who'd come in and match them. So it's incredible the kind of businesses that can actually benefit from a pop-up experience. We've opened since at the King's Road, which we thought would be our absolute flagship shop. Um, just to mention a little bit, and I wanted to kind of pull out things as each of these pictures are shown. If you're thinking, what do we do about kind of the landlords in terms of approaching landlords? 
This shop came about because we were looking for an empty shop in Wimbledon and we went to look at a shop and essentially it said, um, this, it used to be a Claire's Accessories shop in Wimbledon and the estate agent was a business called Nash Bond. So we called them up to say, look, we can see you've got this empty shop in Wimbledon. We'd like to take it on as Pop-Up Britain. And I just happened to find this agent called Bobby, who was the agent from Nash Bond. And he said, look, you can't have the Wimbledon shop because I've got a tenant. He said, but I do have a site on the King's Road. Would you be interested? And I was like, yes, that would be amazing. And the kind of basis on which we tend to get our shops is this was the old Sony Centre on King's Road, 387 King's Road. We're still trading there. It's our final week of trading, actually, in King's Road at the moment. We've been in for five months. But the landlord, um, Sony Centre had moved out. The landlord was looking for a new tenant, uh, but the, for those of you that knew it, it's kind of, it looked a bit of a scruffy shop. And so the landlord said, you know, I'm going to let these small businesses in to see if they can bring this shop to life to help me find a new tenant. And sure enough, the reason why we are being kicked out this week is because they have managed to find a tenant because we've put so much activity in this shop that other businesses have gone by and said, look at all this area of the King's Road coming to life. And maybe just to mention a little bit about that in terms of the kind of things that our pop-up tenants do. And his, um, this was one crew that went in to Kings Road. Again, Kings Road, same model. We have 10 businesses in Kings Road who move in. They trade at the same time for two weeks. They move out and then another 10 businesses move in. And the reason why the pop-up model is so vibrant is these 10 businesses go in. And of course, you've got 10 companies there who've all got a social media following. So they all tweet out Facebook to their followers, their customers, their fans. And they say, right, for two weeks, we're going to be at 387 Kings Road. So existing customers, please come and see us. So if every of those 10 companies does that, all of the 10 companies' customers are coming into that shop. So the other nine businesses benefit from that footfall that's coming in. In addition to that, what they also have to do is attract existing footfall from the Kings Road into that shop. So we have seen in this shop and many of our other shops, fashion shows, lock-ins, drinks parties. Um, one of our tenants that was in Richmond, uh, not there actually, was a box short company called Hamilton and Hare. And I always remember turning up at Richmond one day just to see how the shop was doing. And I got to Richmond Station and this guy in boxer shorts was flyering everyone at the station. I was like, that has to be Pop-Up Britain. So they just sent out guys just in boxer shorts, got lots of attention, covered in the Richmond Times. So all of these tenants come together and say, right, what are we going to do to attract attention, to get business for the two weeks that we're coming in? So it benefits everyone and it also attracts more footfall to the high street. And in fact, funnily enough, being here, this is one of the things that we really want to work with Telefonica on is can we measure any kind of increase in customer traffic to the high street that we're generating on the account of having a pop-up shop there. And when we moved out of Richmond, we stayed in Richmond for three months in our shop there. For the next six weeks, once we'd moved out, we had people from Richmond emailing us saying, please bring that shop back because we love the variety of every two weeks. There were six new businesses in there and the entertainment they bought onto the high street. So it's interesting when you look at that kind of impact. Ovi's one of our tenants, runs a great business called Click Clock, which is watches that you lock onto your uh, wrist. So this is just a few of our tenants. P&Co, has anyone come across this brand? Beautiful t-shirt brand, very urban, very modern. They, and they've just popped up with this in our latest store, which I will show you now. So Kings Road for us, I guess, was kind of a flagship until we got this one. So pop-up Piccadilly. Um, which has just been our most incredible shop to date. And, and the way, and in fact, I ap apologies for the way I'm dressed because you're all like really casual. And the reason why I'm dressed like this is we had the Duke of York visit Pop-Up Piccadilly earlier today uh, because he helped us get this shop. Um, I was out at a dinner, uh, the Duke of York was the main guest and I was seated next to his private secretary and an amazing woman and she said to me um, I love these pop-up shops that you're doing I've been hearing all about them you're helping small businesses get onto the high street and she said have you spoken to the Crown Estate so for those of you that know the Crown Estate is kind of like the Queen's property arm and it owns most of Piccadilly and Regent Street and I said oh my goodness no we haven't spoken to them but I would love to talk to them so the next day this amazing woman uh, essentially sent a note to the Crown Estate and said the Duke would very much welcome if you could find a space for this thing called Pop-Up Britain. And we thought there's no way this is going to happen. 
And sure enough, uh, we went touring the area with the Crown Estate. And for those of you that have seen our shop, it's at 312 Piccadilly. And it's within seconds of Piccadilly Circus. The footfall in this area is immense. So I was there today, um, I was there last week, I'll show you in a minute for another visitor. And it's, uh, as I always say when I go into Piccadilly, the thing that I love about that shop is customers are constantly, constantly coming in the door. And the rent, um, the way that we've modelled it at Pop-Up Piccadilly, um, and these were our first batch of tenants. Uh, again, we have 10 businesses who each go in. And actually, just the other thing I wanted to show from that picture is, hopefully you can see how our branding has evolved. So if you think back to that first Richmond shot where we were just painting it on the walls and hoping, uh, we've worked with a great creative agency who've charged us nothing called Iris, an amazing agency, and they've done all this branding for us. So now... We've had great help from John Lewis, who've again been a great sponsor. When you walk into the shop, um, which I don't have that many internal shots, but it looks like a really professional shop. So our branding has kind of emerged over that 12 months. We've been grateful to have the likes of John Lewis on board. And I'll mention a couple of other sponsors in a minute in terms of how they help. But these were our first 10 businesses. And again, 10 businesses move in. But with Piccadilly, we've only been able to get the shop for five weeks because there's like a major paying tenant that's already got the contract to get in that space. So we've just been able to have it for five weeks. So they each trade for one week. And for one week trading on Piccadilly, those 10 businesses have each paid £300. And um, just to show you, well, that's kind of the window. But this girl uh, was one of our first tenants called Eleanor Stewart. Her business is like four months old and she makes uh, ceramics based on Alice in Wonderland. And so she was a first week tenant. And the reason why she's smiling is because within the first week, first of all, she made sales. And this kind of brings me on to the benefits of Pop-Up Britain. They've all made thousands of pounds worth of sales whilst being in this shop. But not only the sales, well, first of all, she got to meet the other nine businesses that were in there. And that's fantastic kind of ongoing links. But she used to write to us every day and say, you're not going to believe what's happened today. So on account of being in Piccadilly, and it's just virtue and benefit of the location, she had a head buyer from Waterstones, which is based kind of a couple of doors down, come in and say, can I buy a whole range of your cards? So she's now stocked in Waterstones. She had Fortnum and Mason come in and say, we want you to be in an exhibition because we love your ceramics. British Library came in and now doing a licensing deal with her. BAFTA then came in and said, right, you're doing Alice in Wonderland. We want to connect it up with something that we're doing at BAFTA. And she, just, and she is one of 10 who literally wrote to us and said, this is incredible. The head of Dior PR came in and did a deal with one. One of them, in fact, my next tenant, lost property in London. A guy walks in off the street literally and said, tell me about your business. And she's probably got an investment on the back of a guy walking in off the street. Only in Piccadilly do you get this kind of stuff. Stephen Fry walked in the other day, bought some glasses from one of our tenants. And it's just by virtue of the location we've got into. Uh, she got profile in the Daily Mail, all kind of fantastic stuff. So you pay £300 to trade for a week and you never quite know what comes of it. Um, and the Chancellor was in with us a week ago. We seem to be just saying pop-ups have become very popular with the government. Um, and it's a good reason why, which is a very serious point about pop-ups, is any business that's either starting or growing, what a pop-up is brilliant for is testing a market. Um, so Phil Morrow, who I mentioned has been a pop-up tart because he's popped up with us in lots of places, every time he comes to pop up with us, what essentially he's doing is testing, is this where I could do a full-time physical space? Is this a good local market for me? And this is what I love about pop-ups. You pay £300, you trade for a week, and you test a market. Is that a good market for you? And um, in terms of one of the results from our tenants, 12 to 15% of people who pop up with us at Pop Up Britain, those small businesses then go on to look for full-time physical space on the high street because they've tested it, they haven't spent much money on testing it, but they think, right, this is something that works for my product. I can sell it in a physical space. I am prepared to take on that full-time financial commitment. But he loves it because people aren't committing huge amounts of money and signing a shop before they've even tried the market. So the Chancellor came in a week ago. We had the Duke of York in today, which is all fantastic profile for these businesses. So in terms of the results for the companies, um, making sales, of course, is one of the first reasons why they come into a pop-up shop. They want to sell their product. So making sales is one. Doing deals with the other tenants is another. And we have seen that. Today, I was with a girl called Maria Allen, who popped up with us in Richmond. She makes beautiful jewelry. 
And she, when she popped up with us in Richmond, she was the first, again, one of our first lot of tenants. Uh, she now does a joint venture with a company called Tier One Clothing, who also popped up with her. Tier One made shirts. Uh, part of her jewellery is cufflinks, and so now they've done a joint venture which has existed for eight months now. Their shirts selling with her cufflinks. So the tenants make sales, joint ventures with each other. They never know who's going to come in off the street in terms of head retailers. We've got buyers from big retailers who now come into our pop-up shops scouting for talent. So today when the Duke came, we had John Lewis there, a head buyer from John Lewis. And it was so funny because I could see him literally clocking around and looking at all the tenants. Right, what is it that I would like to buy here? So they've done retail deals on the account of being in the shops. But also, it's just an incredible experience kind of just to get out of home. And one of the tenants who was in this morning, great guy from Northern Ireland, and I said, nice to meet you. I'm Emma from Startup Britain, and it's all very exciting in terms of the visitor coming into the shop today. I said, how have you found it? And they've only been in since Monday, this current set. And he said, oh, my God, I want to do this all the time. He said, I've decided I'm much better in a shop than I am at home. Because these are online businesses who tend to normally just be selling online. And all of a sudden, they're meeting customers. They're getting immediate customer feedback in terms of what that customer thinks of their product or service, which, again, is invaluable for them to have. People have changed the pricing of their products, the color of their products, on the back of that immediate customer feedback. So the results have been great for the tenants. And I guess just as a final point in terms of where next for Pop-Up Britain is once you've done Piccadilly, it's really hard to better that in terms of a location in view of the footfall that we get. So we are currently looking for other sites that will kind of equal that to give the footfall for our businesses. But the other thing that we're looking at doing is going global ourselves because the brands that we have who come in as tenants, they really are great British businesses. Lots of beautiful handmade stuff made in Britain and very few of them are exporting. And the reason being, they think it's expensive, it's too difficult. So what we're looking to do with Pop-Up Britain as a brand is hopefully open shops in major international cities to help small businesses go global. But again, not at huge expense. They would literally pop up in New York, pop up in Shanghai, test the market there, see if it works, and then hopefully make a more full-time commitment to that area. So hopefully that's given a useful kind of background in terms of what we're doing with Pop-Up Britain. I'd be very happy to answer questions on anything that's kind of Startup Britain related. Uh, but I think tonight kind of the mission was particularly kind of talking about the high street. So um, at this early hour of the evening, does anyone have any questions? Hello. Hello. Um, I missed the beginning of your speech. So I don't know if you covered it already, but I absolutely love what Mary Porces is doing at the High Street. I don't know if you mentioned or covered that, or I mean, are you going to look to link up with like run it, like rundown areas or like towns and try and pop up with smaller businesses in other towns, or is this going to be London based or? So, well, no, so we are outside of London. Are, so okay. last week we opened in Chard in Somerset. We're just about to open in Dunstable and Ashford. Uh, Piccadilly gets the attention because it's central London, high footfall, great contracts that come out of it. Uh, but it's interesting. Um, when we first launched, we were very kind of much attached to kind of what Mary Portis was doing. But if you look at the Portis arrangement now, there's a bit of a fight starting because Mary Portis says that the high street shouldn't just be for retail. There's a guy who's literally today just called Bill Grimsey who's issued another report fighting her. And there's kind of a whole squabble going on. And if anything, Pop-Up Britain is staying out of that because it's a squabble that's going on about regenerating the high street. And when we first launched, this is why we were invited to go into a government building, is the minister said, right, pop-ups are a solution to the high street. And we always said, no, they are not. Pop-ups are one element to help the high streets, but there's a lot of other stuff that has to be done. And the one thing that Pop-Up Britain has been criticised for, but we have a, what I would like to think is a very strong defence to this, is we have popped up on the King's Road, Victoria, Somerset House, Piccadilly. So people have said to us, you are totally not going to deprived areas. You are going to places where there is no vacancy rates. And our defence to that is our number one priority at Pop-Up Britain is to put our tenants in a place where they will make sales. So Piccadilly has been the best shop for us particularly because the footfall never ends. It just comes, and every time I go into that shop and I say to a tenant, how are you doing? Are you making sales? They're like, can you get out of the way because I've got another customer coming? So our defense to that is right. 
Pop Up Britain's role is to get great British brands onto the high street. At this stage, we haven't found a financial model that works where we can put great British brands onto a really suffering high street because then you have to spend on attracting customers to come in. So for now, our priority is let's go to those high footfall locations. So continue in London, go to other places that we think have got high footfall, hopefully international cities. But there's another model on the side that we are trying to develop that means that we could go into more hard struck areas to say, right, how can we make this work in an area that hasn't got that kind of footfall? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any more questions? Up there? No? Does everybody just want to go home and go to bed? Oh, good, you don't. Okay. Right, okay. <laughs> Was there a hand that kind of went up there? There, that gentleman. Hello. Hello. How do you choose which tenant uh, goes uh, which shop? Yeah, so I don't know if you hear when I mentioned that bit. So the criteria that we use, one is that um, you don't have an existing shop. And the second is, does your product suit that local market? So um, all of our Piccadilly products have been pretty high end. I don't think we've had anything in there that for kind of less than 20 pounds. So quite high end products because we know that's what works. So we've got a young lady called Katie James whose full-time job is to match tenants to the right shops and the right locations. Hi, uh, Hi, that was a really good talk. Thanks a lot. It was Thank really you. interesting. Good. Um, I Thank didn't you. know what to expect and I'm um, really quite inspired. Um, my, my question is really a bit of a uh, follow-on. Is there, is there a lot of competition to get into the shops? I mean, do you have a, a, a like an over... Demand, oversupply or over demand uh, from, from people who want to get in? We do. And so, as you can imagine, with Piccadilly, we've still, and we, and we can't accommodate people. We've got two weeks left in Piccadilly. We are full. We've got people still saying we want to come in. So, again, our job is to continue to find these great locations. So, hopefully, we can get the demand that we've got from the small businesses and literally fill the shops. So, yes, we get lots of, and this thing, um, also today, I took 20 um, kind of crafty handmade businesses to go and see government advisors to talk about how we can keep more British handmade products manufactured in Britain. And every single one of them, from the lady who made, um, I know this is being recorded, and this is late at night, but from the lady who made lingerie for women, as she kept on describing it, for women with big boobs and small backs, uh, who is looking and on a very serious level. She said, the late, apparently, the lace, stretchy lace manufacturers in Britain have all closed down. Uh, so everyone threw from her to a woman who was making, um, runs a business called Tree Couture, which is making amazing furnishings out of particular kind of trees. All of them are kind of saying, we want to get onto the high street and sell. They're all amazing businesses. And this is the thing that we're seeing in small business at the moment. Fabulous increases in people making beautiful stuff. We had the woman who's head of policy for Etsy.com at this session today. And they've got like, what, one and a half million sellers or crazy numbers of businesses. Every single one of these businesses is an online business selling online, never had a high street experience, hardly ever met physically the customers that they're selling to. So we know the demand is there and we get the applications. Our challenge is, can we open up enough shops to meet that demand? And we're working on it. <laughs> can I ask another sure. one then? Um, yeah, I'm quite interested in um, what you were saying about uh, developing an alternate model for, for rundown areas. Is that sort of anywhere, you know, have you got something you can share with us on that? Well, is, it, is it getting local funding or partnerships with local authorities? So that's exactly what it is. So we have, and we're kind of calling it Pop-Up Local. So we've produced a kit um, which is available for free, download on popupbritain.com, which is a kit for town teams who want to open their own pop-up shop. So everything that we've learned is in that kit, so we've kind of done that, but it does depend on local authority funding and that's the model that we're trying to work out. Can we bring local authority funding with also kind of like a corporate partner, which actually should be the thing that I mentioned in terms of we couldn't do any of this without corporate sponsors we have. So we've got a great business called Intuit that enables our tenants to accept payment using their smartphone, using something called Intuit Pay. Vistaprint now, which is a great sponsor of ours. So we can make the model that we've got at the moment work, but when you span that out across 150 towns, there are some real issues that we're going through in terms of how do we scale that when we're a team of four people. So we've opened 11 shops, we've helped like 363 businesses onto the high street. How does that same team, because I don't necessarily want to grow that team, how do we scale the model? So we're considering, is it through franchise? Is it through the kits going out to local teams and local authority funding? But we're probably just a couple of months off kind of getting that absolutely jammed. 
things. Okay. Any more questions? Hi. Hello. I, I'm from Slovakia, and I want to ask you if uh, we have chance we have chance to join to this project, Papa Britain. Yes. I, I don't think it is uh, possible to make something like that in our country because uh, you know we're just five million people. It's not so 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 many like that, like here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we have some nice ideas. It's possible to join to your project or to compete with uh, local, uh, local small businesses when we ask for help from Slovakia and came, came here and you know what I, what I mean? What? Yeah, so I guess there's a couple of anglers. Any businesses wanting to come from Slovakia to pop up in Britain yes. can come into our shop. So that's kind of one angle. Yes. Uh, I suppose launching pop-up Slovakia is a whole different angle, which again, we have all this knowledge now, which we're very, well, I know it, all this knowledge, it's 12 months of knowledge, but it's 12 months more than kind of anyone else has got. So we're very happy to share that with any country who kind of wants to launch something. And in fact, that's a very relevant point because we launched Startup Britain two and a half years ago. I was over the road on Monday as Startup Europe was launched. And as I said to the people who were doing that, you know, come and talk to us. We've got two and a half years of experience in terms of how to run these campaigns. So let's share that knowledge. So very happy to do that. And then the third angle is our businesses coming to pop up in Slovakia as pop up Britain with Slovakia. So any one of those three are certainly things that we can do. So I'll, I'll give you my card. Okay, thank right. you. Any more questions? Yes, no, no? Okay, thank you, Emma, for coming. No, it's thank been a you. Pleasure. Yes, and thank you so much for all coming at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> thank you.